Okay, in this video, what we're gonna to try to tackle is how does the sequence valve work? Because this thing can be very, very confusing. Remember, the good thing about um, hydraulics is their name basically tells you exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And a sequence valve is basically supposed to make something happen in sequence. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to have a cylinder extend, and when it's fully extended, that will, the next sequence would be this motor running right here. Okay, there's a lot of hoses to this and the schematic diagram is a little bit bigger than anything we've experienced before in these videos. But let's go ahead and take a look at it, see how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come from our pump over to our directional control valve. Okay, now um, we'll wait to hook up the sequence valve last uh, just because we can get everything else out of the way. We're gonna go from our T port to our return manifold. Okay, this will send the oil back to tank. All right, our B port will go to the bottom, to the, to the rod end of the cylinder. Okay, and from our A port, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a T, all right? We're gonna grab a T and we are gonna go from our A port into our T. From that T, we're going to make two connections. One is going to go to the blind end port on our hydraulic cylinder. The other port, the other uh, connection on, on our uh, T is gonna go up to the sequence valve. And this is going to go on this cartridge valve right here. This goes to the number one on this cartridge valve, which I know you can't see, but there's a one here, a two here, and a three here, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we are going to take, grab a, oh, a couple extra hoses here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come from our output of our sequence valve down to our motor, okay, our hydraulic motor. And then from our motor, we need to go all the way back to tank. This is gonna be a really long hose. So we're gonna connect to our motor back up to tank. Now, our sequence valves, their output goes to, our sequence valve, their output goes to a pressurized area. So that means, just like the pressure reducing valve, there is an external drain on here that has to be hooked up. So we're gonna come to our external drain here, back up to our return manifold. Okay, and this system is set and ready to go. Now this sequence valve is set, I believe, to about 400 PSI. Really, in this case, it doesn't matter. There's no load on our cylinder, but if there was a load that re required, let's say, 300 PSI to extend out, we would wanna set this at 400 or 450. So when this extends all the way out, we'll go from 300 up to max pressure, and that max pressure is gonna be enough to overcome the biasing spring in here and send that oil right down to the motor, okay? So what should happen here when we turn it on, the, uh, the cylinder should extend. When it's fully extended, this is gonna to start to spin. Let's see what happens. So it's extending out. As soon as it gets all the way, the, the uh, motor starts spinning, the hydraulic motor starts spinning. If I activate this, it retracts the cylinder. Now, I'm gonna let this go and watch what happens here pretty closely. The cylinder extends, I'm at 100 PSI. When it gets all the way up, my sequence valve activates and my motor starts spinning. As soon as I take the pressure, off of my A port, it stops altogether. So it stops because there's no pressure here to overcome the biasing spring in the sequence valve. So that shuts it off. Now, 
where would I use a system like this for sequencing? Well, in this case, what we could do, we could have a close and mix system where basically my door, which is attached to the cylinder, has to be closed before my pump turns on. Nice sequence, a safety valve, make sure we're not splashing whatever it is we're mixing up. Okay. Another would be an example of like a, uh, a, a clamp and drill or a clamp and uh, rotate where it has to be clamped all the way, then my hydraulic motor sequence is on. So the sequence is cylinder extends, motor runs. Okay. As soon as this thing is not in the extension position, the motor shuts off. Okay, so I know there's a lot of hoses in this circuit, but uh, follow, th follow the schematic diagrams and it's not that bad to understand. You have to trust your schematic diagrams and then look for the port vet numbers on the different uh, valves that you're going to be using out in the field. Okay, sometimes you have to look on a sump plate, a sub plate, sometimes you have to look on the cartridge and see what it looks like, sometimes you have to go back to the manual and figure out what exactly is what. Okay?